Production funding for Homework Hotline is provided by New York State United Teachers. Working to educate and assist students, provide medical care and support, and strengthen local communities. NYSIC, working for communities across New York State. Hey now, let's take a moment. So we all can figure it out. What it's all about. It's the homework hotline. The homework hotline. The homework hotline. The homework hotline. Welcome to Homework Hotline. I'm Craig Zaramba. And I'm Donna Minio. Homework Hotline is the place where you can get the tools you need to succeed both in and out of the classroom. For more information on Homework Hotline, go to our website, homeworkhotline.org. Here you can find games, other online resources, and the latest episode of our show. We want to remind our viewers that a little later in the show, Dave Will from the Seneca Park Zoo will be here with Mr. Legs the Millipede. Now we also want to know what you think about this. If you caught a classmate cheating on a school assignment or test, would you tell on them why or why not? You can weigh in on this question and tell us what you think by visiting us on Facebook and leaving us a message, tweeting us by using the hashtag HHVoiceIt, or by visiting our website, homeworkhotline.org, and clicking on the Voice It button. Remember, the most thought-provoking responses will be put on air. The answers will be shared on tomorrow's Homework Hotline. And now, let's get to tonight's Creature Teaser. This animal lives in the eastern United States and Canada. It is found primarily in forests and other woodland areas, but it, all, it is also commonly seen in parks and even your backyard. This creature has a small body, four legs, and a big bushy tail. It is covered with gray fur and has a white fur on its underside. This creature uses its bushy tail for balance as it runs up and down trees. Its tail is even longer than its body. This animal eats nuts, bark, and seeds. It is known for hiding little stockpiles of food in the fall that it can dig up during this winter. This animal communicates with others by flicking its tail and making short, chirping noises. It makes nests in trees out of twigs, feathers, and leaves. Now, if you think you can solve the creature teaser, give our hotline a call at 1-866-264-5904 or just answer it on our website homeworkhotline.org answer correctly and you could have a chance to share the answer at the end of the show every correct response we added to our hotline hall of fame earn enough points and you could win a tablet at the end of the season Alright, throughout the month of March, we will be celebra celebrating Women's History Month this week on Homework Hotline we'll be looking at important dates and numbers in history Today, we focus on the year 1920, because that was the year the 19th Amendment was passed. We will also take a look at the number 100, because in the year 2020, we will be celebrating the 100th year anniversary of the 19th Amendment. Cool. All right, I'm going to take a look at the number 1920. All right, the number 1920. The number 1920. Okay. All right, come on over. Um, one of the things I was really interested in um, in regards to the 1920s and now was how to have prices of everyday grocery items changed or in de increased, I should say. So I just took what we would normally eat for breakfast. So the first thing I did is I looked up bread, butter, eggs, and bacon. And all of these were at the one pound. And in 1920, bread was 12 cents a pound. In 2018, the average, as of right now, is $1.28 for a pound of bread. So if we take a look at this, I want to know, did that number increase or decrease? Well, it did. It increased. It went from $0.12 cents to $1.28 for the same amount. So we would write this as an increase. And I'm just going to write INC for increase. Now. What I'd like to figure out is what is the percentage and the difference, okay? So what we're gonna do first, I have the columns here, difference in the prices, 
Then we're going to figure out the ratio and what that is as a, fra as a decimal, and then we're going to convert that to a percentage. So first of all, what we're going to do for difference is you're going to take the new price, the $1.28, and you're going to subtract the old price, the 12 cents. So when you subtract that, eight minus two is six, two minus one is one, and one minus nothing. You get a dollar 16. So that is your difference in the price. So now, what are you gonna do? You're gonna take the difference to the original, to the 12 cents. So for this next one, you're gonna take that dollar 16, let's actually change that up so we can not get our math all mixed up. A dollar 16, and you divide that by the 12 cents. And I pulled up the calculator here, and we're just gonna hit the division sign, and we're gonna put the one, two. Oops, I forgot the decimal. So, oh, I'm not gonna trust myself on that. 1.16 divided by 0 0.12 equals 9 point and a whole bunch of sixes there. So when you do that, now what you're gonna do is when you have this decimal, 9.66, and I'm gonna round it to the seven. I'm not gonna do because it goes on forever. Um, I'm gonna just round it. When we wanna make it a percent, we now have to multiply that by 100. So when you do that, that's the same thing as multiplying by 100 is the same thing as taking your decimal and moving it two places to the right. So it's 966.7%. So that's a, the increase, percent increase from 1920 to 2018. That was the increase. So if I took a, take a look and do one more of these, um, let's see, you have 233, and you would wanna subtract the 70 cents. First of all, you wanna mark that it's an increase. All of these are increases, so you would fill that in. 233 minus seven, 70 cents, so three minus zero, can't borrow, so now 13 minus seven is six. In one, you have $1.63. That's your difference. Now, percent increase, we have to write our ratio. That, again, is your difference in your prices. $1.63 over the original, 0 0.70, that's my fraction. So let's do that, 1.63 divided by 0 0.7 is equal to 2.32 eight, five, so we're gonna round it to 2.329. So it's about, multiply by 100, remember, move it two places, it's about 232.9%. Now, real quick, I'm just gonna undo these so you can see. All of these, and I'm gonna lower this, the two in the middle, the bread, or the eggs in the butter, have a, over a 200% increase, but the bread and the bacon are over 900% increase. That makes sense. But you know what I found? I actually found a website that will take how much your penny was in 20, 1920 and convert it to how much it is today. So I found out that a penny in 1920 is the same as 13 cents today. Okay, so if I take that, I take the bread, and I take the 12 cents, and now I'm gonna multiply it by that 13 cents, and, or the 13, you now have $1.56. That's what the bread should cost if you went by that conversion. And if you look, it's actually $1.56 here and $1.28. So we're actually spending less than what we should. So if I compare these, this is actually a lower. It's a decrease, so that's a DEC. So now the same thing. Look at butter, it's crazy. 70 cents back in 1920. If I did the 13 cents for every penny, it's $9.10 for a pound of butter. We don't do that, we do 233. So again, it's less, we're spending less. And if you look, the one right here, the bacon, 
50, I love bacon. I don't know about anybody else, but I love it. And I'm willing to spend the seven, eight bucks that I might spend. But 52 cents for bacon in 1920 and 13 cents per penny, so that's $6.76 for a pound of bacon. We spend, on average, $5.65. So those are pretty close, but eggs are crazy apart. So you have 47 cents in 1920. If you convert it, that's $6.11 today, and we're really only spending $1.77. So I found this really interesting, trying to convert money from the older ages to today and see what I, I could be spending that I'm really not spending. I hope you enjoyed. King Philip came over for great spaghetti is a silly way to remember the classification of animals and plants in science. The classification order is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And now we'd like to welcome Dave from the Seneca Park Zoo to the show. Hey, Dave, I'd high five you. Looks like you got oh, something yeah, to put your hand there. <laughs> so what do you got for us today? Well, I have a giant African millipede, cool. uh, which comes to us from Western Africa. So right. in the tropical, subtropical areas of Western Africa. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a lot of legs. Uh, are Quite they a bit, born yeah. with that many? <laughs> so good question. And everybody usually asks us, um, do they have that many to start out? And no, uh, they usually start with about six legs. Right. As normal, you know, invertebrates would. Okay. Um, he is going to grow. Each time he grows, he'll molt. And then he'll actually shed a section. And then another section will come out on the end. And then he'll get two more or uh, four more legs. So four legs per, per each section. section. Yep. Okay. So, so he'll just continue to grow and grow. Why does this invertebrate need so many legs? Well, the reason he needs so many legs is because he lives in an area where he has to be like a little tank. Uh, he will run through the bottom of a forest floor with lots of dead leaves and dead vegetation. And he has to find them and eat them as best he can. Okay. So that is kind of his move. And he is a decomposer, right. which is really, really beneficial for the environment. So sure. he needs lots of legs to kind of go over and under under a lot of decaying plant matter. Cool. Mm -hmm. I like how you said they he runs through the forest floor, <laughs> yes. but he doesn't seem to be running. Is this as fast as he'll go? Yes, and it is uh, actually kind of slow for a millipede today. <laughs> um, he is uh, going to move about this speed. They don't move very, very fast, and that is because they don't really need to, uh, and they're going to go nice and slow so that they can get from place to place, uh, and that is pretty much their, their kind of, you know, that's how they do things as a millipede. It's my kind of running, right? <laughs> yeah. So now the millipede has a front and a back, and on the front yes. it has antenna. What are yes. they going to use them for? So the antenna, as you can see, is kind of tapping along my arm as he runs up me here, uh, and that's because he is sensing, uh, he is feeling, and he is hearing and tasting all from those antenna. Cool. I'm going to move him back down towards my hand here. Right. Yeah. Uh, and those actually help him navigate his area, especially in an area where uh, it's very, very dark most of the time. So he can see light and dark mostly. Other than that, those antenna kind of navigate him through everything All right. else. Okay, I wanted to ask, go back and back to the whole how fast do they go piece. Yes. Um, how do they defend themselves if they're that slow? Well, very, very good question. So what he likes to do is uh, he'll roll up into a ball, which he's like starting that. to do now. Yep. Yep. As soon as I touch him, he rolls right up into a ball. And then what's interesting about that is he will then exude some really foul smell things from his uh, rear area yeah right. and uh, it's gonna be called musking and what he's gonna do is a foul smelling and tasting substance will come out uh, and actually has small amounts of cyanide in it really so that's gonna really deter a lot of animals and make them sick if they end up committing to eating a millipede Ew. now with the antenna are all this is an insect yes and oh, no. do not all quite. insects have antennas so not all insects have antennas, and he's actually not quite an insect, so he's a proto-insect, okay. meaning they derive from similar things, but they kind of split at one point. Uh, right. And proto-insects, he does not have three body parts like a normal insect would. Right, head, abdomen, and, uh, and thorax. thorax. Yep, yep, exactly. No, he actually starts with three segments, but they're not body parts. Uh, and what happens is he'll continue to grow, as you can see. He doesn't just have six legs like sure. most insects do. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a proto-insect, so he's an invertebrate, which right. we call okay. which just means he doesn't have a backbone. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then is 
what you keep touching there, um, the shell, and if it's not, what is it? So a lot of times we call things shells, armor, that kind of thing. Oh. Uh, this is an exoskeleton, so it's a good way for him to protect his insides because his skeleton is actually on the outside of his body. Unlike us humans, our skeleton's internal. His is on the outside, so inside of him is all goop at that point. <laughs> right. uh, and this actually keeps his shape and is nice and strong. Uh, not super strong, though. He can't take a fall or anything like that. Uh, he has to stay on the ground because it'll actually crack, and then that'll kind of compromise his health. Okay. If that happens. So you were saying that how they, they motor underneath vegetation and stuff like that. So you won't really find these guys climbing up trees. Then, no. Even though they look like they could do that quite well. Yes. No. They climb. need to stay on the ground, which right. is mostly what they're doing. And that's where a lot of their food sources are. Uh, and that is most of the times uh, where you'll find them on the ground. You go even in Rochester, roll over a log, you'll find some of his cousins that are local to the area. Uh, and that's just because that's where his food is. And a little bit what we can do to help out is to just recycle our so sure. these guys are the recyclers of the rainforest, yep. and we like to kind of pr promote that practice as well. So keep recycling and doing all of our great practices we do at home. Composting. Things and like composting, that. and yeah. then you'll promote millipedes and everything else. Yeah, very cool. Okay, that's yeah. really good. Thank so you. So I don't see any mites on here, but they do have mites they that do live on them? They do from time to time, yeah. They'll get mites, mites that live yeah. on them. They uh, clean them? Yep, they clean them. Um, they actually uh, get them through areas that will help clean the body, and then they actually get food off of the millipedes. So it's nice. symbiotic. Yeah. Right, very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Thank you very much, Dave. Thanks a lot. Um, if you would like to learn more about the Seneca Park Zoo and see other videos about animals, visit our website, homeworkhotline.org. And now, stay right there. We'll be back in a second. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest tends to stay at rest. And an object in motion tends to stay in motion with the same direction and speed unless interfered with. So I like the millipedes. I actually had one. They're very cool. And you see the little bugs that crawl on them and take care and clean them up. Well, I was watching his legs, yeah. and it's the, it's sort of it looks like the wave yes. or like wheels going up yes. as you keep going. It was kind of cool watching the legs. So I'm going to go over and we're going to talk about the number 100. So come on along and check this out. Sounds great. All right. So because in 2020, which is two years from now, we're going to be celebrating the 100th anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment, which was what gave women the right to vote. All right. So right now it's happy 98th anniversary. All right. Um, and this is all because of in uh, August 26, 1920, that's when women got the, or the passing of the, the 19th Amendment and they were able to start voting. So some things about 100. 100 is a perfect square, which means you can take 10 times 10, which will give you 100. All right. Um, some old stuff that I found out in the Old Norse, the world hundred, which was uh, our 100 drives originally meant 120. So then that would actually be kind of cool. So if someone gave you 100, you'd actually get $120 instead of $100. All right. 100 Men and a Girl, 1937, is the only film that uh, with the word 100 in it in this title that has ever received an Academy Award since we were just watching uh, the Oscars last night, kind of cool. Um, the Hundred Years War between England and France actually lasted for 116 years, all right, since it started in uh, 1337 and ended in 1453. So I still like the first one here where I'd rather have $100 because that that'd give me a little extra cash money, all right? All right, so 100 of the most common words in the English account for 50% of all the words that we speak. So I kind of thought that was kind of interesting because you think of the words that you talk with your friends um, and all those words that we use, the, the, the most 100 ones are 50% of everything that you use in every, almost every single language or every single sentence. 100th uh, most populated country in the world is Bulgaria. And among the 100 most used words in English, only person and because have more than five letters. Another kind of interesting fact you're going to lodge in your brain that'll be like useless information unless you go on Jeopardy and win. I hope you do that. All right. Um, we got a couple more interesting facts. Our $100 bill, um, if you've looked at some money in your pocket recently, it's kind of interesting and it's, it's patented kind of, you know, if you get caught making money on your copy machine, you're going to go to jail, so don't do that. But there's some really interesting things in uh, um, the dollar bills nowadays. Um, there is a uh, magnetic strip that goes through the dollar bills. Um, hundreds, ones, fives, tens, twenties, all of them have that. So like if you go to a vending machine and you put in a $5 bill, 
because they're all the same size, it knows that you gave it a five. And if you look at different bills, they'll have that mark at a different spot. Um, also, if you take your dollar bill and you hold it up to light, this one doesn't show up because it's just a, on a flat screen, but there's usually a watermark of either the president or who's on the actual dollar bill or an image in there, which is kind of cool. And actually, the dollar bill is made with cotton fibers. So all the money that we have actually has some cotton in it. Another cool thing is if you want to check to see if a dollar bill is really or not, is wet your finger and rub it on the dollar bill. The ink shouldn't come off. So if it comes off and you get a little black mark on your finger, you know that's a fake dollar bill or a fake hundred dollar bill. So you want to let people know, all right? All right, so now because we're going to be celebrating in 2020 the 100th anniversary of women earning the right to vote or getting the, the right, the 19th Amendment, um, I, I thought it was appropriate to talk a little bit about Susan B. Anthony. All right, she was born in fe uh, February 15, 1820. She died in 1906 and was unable to actually experience that right to vote. Um, she was the co-founder and president of the National American Women's Suffrage Association from 1892 to 1900. Uh, she co-founded this with Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and there were other people that were instrumental in getting women the right to the vote. Um, Luc Lucretia Mott, uh, Frederick Douglass actually had a little bit of role in that when he was uh, helping uh, Susan B. Anthony and the, and the discussions that they had. And one of the very, very coolest things that I think about uh, Susan B. Anthony that I discovered, she voted illegally, all right? She went to the voting polls before women had the right in 1872 for the presidential election. She was arrested and checking out. She got fined $100 that she never paid, said, not going to do it. So there's another fact about 100. So I'm hoping you guys think that's kind of cool and $100, uh, the 100 number, what it is, and kind of some cool facts that might help you out someday. You never know. Thanks a lot. first thing you think of when you think about the country Brazil? Would it be that it is the largest country in South America and the fifth largest nation in the world? Or would it be how Brazilians are crazy for soccer? Brazil has produced some of the world's best soccer players and has won the Men's FIFA World Cup five times. Brazil is South America's most industrial nation, producing items like steel, planes, and cars. Other agricultural exports for Brazil include coffee, cocoa beans, cotton, soybeans, rice, and tropical fruits. Brazil's jungles allow for this country to have the largest variety of animals on Earth, including 600 mammal species, 1,500 fish species, 1,600 bird species, and an astounding 100,000 different types of insects. Unfortunately, deforestation has been and continues to be a huge problem in Brazil. The results of this deforestation include the loss of most of the Atlantic rainforest and huge portions of the Amazon rainforest disappearing as well. Brazil's government has tried to counteract this by creating national parks, but they only cover about 7% of this large South American country. I know that it's, um, we talked a little bit about the 100, we talked a little yep. bit about 1920, but you also found some interesting information out. Yes, um, um, I found that the, in 1920 when women first voted, there were eight million women came out to vote. And I was kind of, there's why I wouldn't make a good lawyer, because I didn't think of <laughs> how many people actually voted. I couldn't find how many people, or wasn't thinking about how many people actually voted to see a percentage of how many women. But what I did find out in some of the recent elections in 2012, 53% um, of the voters were women. That means women are coming more out to the half. polls. More than half. And in 2008, um, there were 10 million more women voters than men voters in the elections. So that means that you women are out there doing stuff, and, you know, um, I can't think of Trying it Trying to make a difference. Yes, right, making a big difference. So I also, through your lesson when you were talking about 50%, yes. um, that's out of 100. Percents ah. are always out of 100. There you go. So, all right, cool. All right, we have a winner in tonight's Creature Teaser. Hello, who's Hello. this? Hello, winner. Oh, hello. Hi, who's this? Um, uh, my name is Shahiban. Hi, how are you tonight? Good. All right. And what creature were we teasing you about? Um, gray squirrels. All right. Uh, so you've seen these things around your house, yes? Yeah. All right. Is there anything that we told you through our clues that maybe helped you figure it out real fast? What? 
Is did, it? <laughs> were there any clues or did you already know the answer? Did you have to look it up? Yeah, I already know the answer. All right, cool. Well, that's kind of cool. Is there anything you know about squirrels that we didn't talk about? Uh, All, right. All right, well, thanks for calling, and congratulations. Don't forget, every correct response goes into our Homer Line Hall of Fame. Earn enough points, and you could win a tablet at the end of the season. Now, that's all the time we have for tonight. Tomorrow on Hotline, we will be taking a look at how many women serve in Congress. We will also find out how Girl Scouts are passing the torch forward to the next generation of female leaders. Cool. Good, Good night. Good night. Production funding for Homework Hotline is provided by New York State United Teachers. Working to educate and assist students, provide medical care and support, and strengthen local communities. NYSET, working for communities across New York State.